Hi everyone, I'm here at the Palian Stud um, and I'm joined here by Anita Hall and Jamie Anderson and there's a gentleman standing next to me but I'm going to allow you guys to introduce me to. Um, so we're going to cover about the myths of breeding and what people do and don't expect when they get into this. But first of all, if you'd, uh, Jamie, if you'd like to introduce Joss who's standing next to me. Uh, this is Joss, Joss Mottishead. Joss is the owner of equinereproduction.com. That's equinereproduction.com with a hyphen, so don't forget that. <laughs> uh, Joss is probably one of the best known labourers breeding experts in the world. Uh, his website is probably the most visited breeding resource and Joss is, uh, is sort of my uh, source of knowledge for, for any problems we come across or any issues we have. I always come and get in touch with Joss first. Um, so he's the best man for the job. So quite an introduction for you. I'm glad <laughs> I let him do that. Hope so, I can live up to it. <laughs> yeah. Joss, how often do you come to the UK? Uh, typically about two or three times a year. Mm -hmm. And what do you do when you get here? Well, um, I, up until very recently, I have family over here, so I spent a lot of time just visiting family. But mm -hmm. uh, come over and certainly spend some time with Jamie and Anita. Uh, they are actually affiliates of ours um, in that uh, they're a certified freezing location, semen freezing location. Mm -hmm. So uh, given the opportunity, we do some semen freezing when we're over here with, with Jamie and Anita as well and, uh, and generally talk about breeding. That's now, one of my favorite Jamie, conversation topics. Yeah. <laughs> and I know Jamie told me that he's been over to visit you in the States and has actually done some courses with you. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that and how people can find out more information about that. Well, we do short courses on equine reproduction, do um, basically different locations throughout the U.S. Uh, we also have done some that specialised on embryo transfer specifically. Um, and those, the information on those are available on our website, uh, equinereproduction.com, don't forget the hyphen. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> um, and uh, Jamie came over for one of those a couple of years ago now, and um, that was probably our, our first, well, it was first face-to-face -face communication we, we communicated communicated by email since uh, and, uh, and certainly all yeah it all there. started from there. So Jamie and Anita you've been giving me some fantastic information there's a lot of videos on the site that we're going to go through but let's just talk a little bit about Palian Stud and what you guys do here so just I know it's hard in a nutshell what what is it that we're doing here today? Uh, in a nutshell the the stud is a complete breeding service for right. professional owners of stallions and mares, competition animals, uh, those who want to breed a, a, a foal out of their their old hack, whatever they, whatever the the purpose or the aim of their breeding, we can, you can help. Uh, help them out. Yeah. Now, Anita, you've been giving me some great information today, and I think it's important to tell people get in touch, get some information before you do this. Why yeah. Is that? Um, I think that sometimes just at this time of year people seeing foals on the ground and they have friends that are breeding and they suddenly think oh you know I want to put my mare in foal and yeah. I think it's something that you can rush into a little bit too quickly without really doing enough homework and enough research on the, the costs and what stallion you want to use on do you have the right facilities to breed and, and for a foal and, and a youngster after weaning and I think people just need to do a little bit of research before they dive in and get the mare pregnant. Brilliant. Now, Jamie, some of the facilities you've got here, I and mean, obviously we've had a good look around today, it's an awesome setup. Um, there's foals running around, the sun is shining, I mean, it looks like heaven. What is a day-to-day -day routine for you? <laughs> or do we not want to know every, that? No, every, every day is different. Um, yeah. we, we try to get the stallions collected in the morning. We normally have to send out for maybe between 5 and 20 mares a day. Mm -hmm. um, we have 11 resident stallions currently, and that varies between probably 8 and and 15 residents at any one time. Mm -hmm. um, we'll also have the vet round in the morning to do scans on the mares that are a resident here to be put in fold to the stallions either here or mm -hmm. uh, elsewhere in the country or even further abroad. Um, we also do embryo transfer work, we have mares in for folding down. So. Um, the, the days are pretty full. Yeah, yeah, I would say. Now, obviously, we know we're in prime time. Locate, obviously, the foals are on the ground, so you guys have been phenomenally busy with all the birthing of the foals. But that it doesn't stop there with the facilities you offer, does it? When you come into winter, there are other facilities, training, etc., that you offer. So tell us. Yeah, a bit well, about that. the the yard um, is, as you know, quite a big yard, and yeah. we we have apart from the the stud side, we have liveries, we do breaking, we have um, horse in for training. Uh, our staff are on NVQ programs, and they do BH test exam so you know it's a sort of an all-round equestrian place really it's not just all about breeding obviously that is a, a major part of it but yeah, yeah there's cool. uh, um, just I think one thing we've touched on today um, and spoken to Jamie and we'll see in the other videos is the handling of the stallions how important is that oh it's paramount it's paramount um, you're dealing with depending obviously the size of the stallion you know 12 1400 pounds of, of raging hormone mm -hmm. uh, and you're as close to nature as you're ever going to get when you're in the breeding shed 
and uh, things can go very well, things can run very smoothly, or things can be a total disaster. Mm -hmm. um, anyone that tells you they've been in the breeding business for years and they've never had a wreck in the breeding shed is a downright liar, because they happen. <laughs> um, but the thing is that if you're handling the stallion correctly, if all of the staff know what they're doing, if things um, should be planned out ahead of time, one tries to follow a rough game plan, then if things do go wrong, it's hopefully going to be a safe outcome for everybody. Fantastic. Well, we're going to touch on that and do an actual video about that to give people information. But the other point we've made today um, is about where to get help. And it's not necessarily through the veterinary route, is it? Not necessarily. Um, you know, vets come out of vet school and in many instances, they will have touched on a variety of subjects in a, a huge number of different species, but they won't necessarily have focused on one particular aspect, you know, reproduction or even more focused, equine reproduction, the, the horse specifically. So although they may have a good basic knowledge, they won't necessarily have specialized in, in that area. Um, and it's therefore more important to head towards somebody that does specialize in that, such as Jamie and Anita, mm -hmm. um, and uh, seek, seek some specialized information. Um, you know, yes, your vet may be very knowledgeable about lameness, but that doesn't necessarily then mean they know about breeding as well. And yeah. Jamie, just to finish off, what would be your top tip, your first piece of advice to give someone that was thinking about putting their mare in foal? <laughs> Do as much research as you can. Um, the more time you spend understanding the process about how the mare is put in foal, uh, the possible problems you can encounter, how to care for the mare during pregnancy and the things to expect uh, at foaling and afterwards are just so important and so often they're skimmed over. So do Brilliant. plenty of reading. Brilliant. Jamie, Anita, Joss, thank you very much. Thank you.